Hello geographers, we are back and we're going to finish up discussing um, Canadian culture today. Uh, we started it yesterday, so kind of getting back into it. Uh, Canada has two official languages, where the United States, we have zero official languages. We do not have one. Some countries don't, some do, some have more than one. Since Canada was originally settled by two really different ethnic groups in the English and the French, uh, two different countries um, had to kind of merge the people, the settlers, the colonists together eventually after Great Britain won the French and Indian War. Um, they, they have two official languages, French and English. And you can see if you as you enter Canada, uh, you have both English and French welcoming you. Stop signs, if you look at, if you look at a uh, you know, any type of ingredients on a can of any sort. This is a, not a Canadian can, but if you did see a Canadian can, it have ingredients listed um, in both English and French. And so uh, that just kind of everything, instructions, everything has to be in those two languages. All right, dialect, we've talked a little bit about this in the past. Uh, it's the same language, but some words are different. The way things are pronounced is different. And Canada has a different dialect than we do in the United States. Um, usually there's no issue in figuring out the difference, but sometimes there can be. You might hear somebody refer to a toque. And you might think, well, what in the world is a toque? If you watched that video yesterday where the guy, the American in the office was was kind of poking fun of the Canadian. He's like, where's your toque, eh? What is a toque? It's a hat, stocking cap, cover up your head. And you might think, well, most people just probably call it a stocking cap or a cap. No, they call it a toque. Uh, here's another interesting one. The letter Z is pronounced Z. And some people in the past have been like, well, what do they say? Z zebra, zebra, you know, zebra. No, they say zebra, but you know it's A B C D E F G H I J K L M N O P Q R S T U V W X Y N Z. So it still makes a z sound, but it's Z, not Z. If you've watched uh, Men in Black, you have Agent J, you have Agent K, and then who's the boss? Z, Agent Z. Did run into a little trouble once up in Canada. Uh, we we're trying to. There was some website that was like easyfishing.com, but it was like ezfishing.com. And as, as the guy I was with was trying to explain it to this resort owner, the resort owners can't figure it out. Why? Because it's in his language, it's ezfishing.com. Well, it doesn't make sense then. A hoser. You will call an unsophisticated person a hoser. We might call them an idiot or a hillbilly or whatever, they're going to say, yep, oh, that's a hoser, a honyuk. Uh, rubber bands are not rubber bands. They are elastics. Tennis shoes are runners. Uh, you won't say, hey, I'll give you a call later. You'll say, hey, I'll phone you later. I did run into this at uh, the curling rink in Fort Francis, Canada, when I had to go upstairs and uh, give a guy a call. And I was, you know, the come and curl with us. We were one guy short and uh, he was in the phone book. Some of you kids probably don't know what phone books are, but this was way back in like 2007 or 2008. And uh, I went up there to get the phone book. And I asked the, the guy upstairs in the office, I'm like, hey, can I get it? I got a I got to call so-and-so. Do you have the phone book? And he looked at me like, what? What do you have to do? I'm like, I got to call so-and-so. And he was like, huh? And then finally he's like, oh, you got to phone him? Yeah, I got to phone him, I guess. A coach is a Chesterfield. And I think some people here might call it a Chesterfield. I had a grandmother called it a Chesterfield. Uh, macaroni and cheese is referred to as craft dinner. So even if it isn't a craft macaroni and cheese product, if it's some other macaroni and cheese product, they still will refer to it as craft dinner. Uh, uh, colored pencils are pencil crayons. And that's just a few. There are more if you go and find them. If you're interested in this, I'm sure you can find a lot more. 
Population 37 million, so roughly has the same amount of people as California. Um, Canadians live on about only about 10% of the land, and most live within 100 miles of the U.S. border. Now you look at like Ontario here, you might say, ooh, there's not many people in Ontario. Yes, there are. Ontario's way down here as well. So they're really packed in. Toronto down here. And you forget how far south it is here. I remember um, we, they were holding the tryouts for the, um, you know, up in Fort Francis for the for the Briar big curling tournament. And we went over to watch. And the region that Fort Francis is in right here, uh, they called it Northern Ontario. And I said to somebody, I'm like, why would you call it Northern Ontario? You're right on the border. Wouldn't this be Southern Ontario? No, Southern Ontario is way down here. This is Northern Ontario. Stage four, demographic transition. I bet you could have guessed that. Having less than two children per woman. Sports similar to us. Uh, they do have their own football league, so there are no NFL teams up there. They do play with 12 players on the field, there, so there are some different rules. Um, the Toronto Raptors are their lone NBA team these days. Um, they used to have the Vancouver Grizzlies, but they moved. And they have the Toronto Blue Jays for baseball. They used to have the Montreal Expos, but they moved to Washington, D.C. Blue Jays won a few World Series or two back in 92 and 93. Some pretty good squads. A bunch of pro hockey teams up there. And then lacrosse. Some of you are playing lacrosse these days. It was an old Iroquois sport that um, became popular in, um, you know, it grew into lacrosse, and you find a lot of lacrosse players in Canada. These games used to go on for days, for days. A little bit of the cuisine. Uh, Canada is the world's largest producer of maple syrup, or syrup. I say syrup, but a lot of people say syrup. Um, Putin is a delicacy there. I'll show you a picture of Putin. They have these smoked, or the smoked meat is popular. Um, here's Putin, they have these tarts too. So here's Putin, this is like, it's probably not their national dish, but it's, you know, kind of an unofficial national dish where you have French fries with cheese curds and gravy on top of it. Very good, I used to get it occasionally after curling. Uh, it's something you can eat, but you don't want to be like eating it, you know, too often. Mmm, Putin. This one looks a little better to me than that one. Beaver tails. You have the old fry bread down here. A little chocolate and whatever else you want on it. Uh, the kid brought these in when I was in International Falls. The Nanamo bars. Nanamo, I'm probably saying that wrong. But it's like... A custard in here, like a butter, thick butter. It was a little rich for my taste. Here's their favorite restaurant, Tim Hortons. Now, if you're a real Canadian, you're probably not going to call it Tim Hortons. You're going to call it Timmy's or Tim's. So you might say something like, oh, should we head down to Tim's, eh? No, or no, that's more Australian. Eh? Eh? Oh, yeah, it would be like that. Eh? How about we head down to Timmy's? Pick up a donut or two. Eh? Yeah, so I don't know. I curled with some guys that, you know, they would say, yeah, we don't really talk like that. But then they'd be making a curling shot, and they'd be like, you know, oh, pretty good shot there, eh? And I'd look at them like, mm, they do talk like that. So at least those guys did, my curling team. Uh, but Tim Hortons was, uh, we stopped there a few times on some fishing trips and stuff, and uh, really good sandwiches. It's, it's fast food, but it's not. It's it's not like deep fried anything. It's sandwiches, soup, chips, uh, coffee, donuts, that type of thing. So very popular restaurant there, Timmy's. I'll have a video link for you in a little bit. Here's their currency. Now, this they, they don't have $1 bills or $2 bills. So you're going to get a $1 coin. On this side of the coin is a loon. And so they refer to their $1 coins as a loony. So it would be very common for someone to say, hey, can I borrow a loony? Or, hey, you got a loony on you? Nobody would say, hey, you got a buck. Or can I get a dollar? It would be, hey, I'll take a loony. So now you have a $2 coin with a polar bear on it. 
once again, they will not refer to this as a polar or a, you know, whatever, a pulley or something. This is a toonie. So you have a loony and a toonie. And people have thought I've been joking about that in the past. I am not. It's a loonies and toonies. Look it up. Loonie. Toonie. Here's the rest of their coinage. 50 cent piece. Quarter. Dime. Here's the, here's the noble beaver and the penny. And then their money is different, or their dollars um, are different as well. Their, their paper money, which has like more of a, <coughs> oh, sorry, <coughs> COVID, um, has more of like a uh, plastic feel to it. Um, and uh, you have a, or they at least, it kind of has like some of that, the decal that's like plastic on it. But you have your brown 100s, you have your kind of a orangish, pinkish 50, 20s are green, 10. The other sides have like animals and stuff on it. Some major cities, Toronto is the largest city and this is a world city. Um, Three million people living in that area. And so this is a, this is the big city, lots of stuff to do there. Um, if you're going to visit Canada, if going to visit Toronto is like going to visit New York City or going to visit Chicago. Quebec City is, oh, made myself too big there. Quebec City is the capital city of Quebec. So it's the capital city of the province of Quebec. I mean, it's an old city. It has a lot of areas of it in it that make it feel like you're in Europe. Um, it has fortified walls that are around part of the old part of the city. Uh, there's some of the last remaining in the Americas, north of Mexico. I'll have a video link on that as well. Uh, the uh, Quebecos, Quebecos are people that, um, you know, are native to Quebec. They're the French Canadians. Uh, you, there is a movement. Some people would like to break away from Canada and become an independent country because when you go to Quebec or you go to parts of um, Canada where it's mostly French people, it's almost like being in a different country. You're hearing a different language. You know, the culture is a little bit different. So some people said, yeah, we want to break away. Not a big enough group to say that. I mean, you're going to try to break away from one of the most um, powerful countries in the world. You know, it would weaken Canada a little bit. It would also really weaken uh, Quebec. There's Quebec. Montreal is the second largest city, and it is in Quebec, right along the, um, close to the St. Lawrence River, or actually on the St. Lawrence River. And, uh, it is a major city, lots of stuff to do there, colleges, museums, big businesses, 2 million people. But if you go there, you're going to hear a lot of people speaking French. Oui, oui, jette les blis, uh, filet mini, pepe lipi, croissant. Speak a little French. Here's Ottawa, the capital. Saw that on the map here. Ottawa is like our Washington, D.C. It's really not, it's not in a province or in a state. It is its own, um, it's its own area. It's its own little region. It is their capital. Calgary is out west. And like our western part of our country, you see a lot of rodeos and ranching. Vancouver is out in British Columbia, and it's located or it's located right on the ocean. Um, it's known for its tourism and its movie industry. Uh, lots of filming going on there. So it's kind of like the Hollywood of of, uh, of Canada. I remember when I was a kid, I liked the show uh, X-Files, and that was always, it always said they filmed in Vancouver. You can see Vancouver right here on the, you know, right on the ocean. It takes you out there on the bay. It's in the mountains. So another very scenic place. Look at that. Just look at it all day. All right, I have got some video links that you can take a look at after you're, you finish filling everything out. Um, and then that'll be close to wrapping up. Uh, well, this will be our last, probably our last notes of the, uh, of the year.